Okay, so this is number 27 and 20.2. <laughs> okay. I just want, yeah, totally clear. Do your homework. So, I'm supposed to calculate the circulation of a vector field xy, comma z, comma 3y around a square that's 0 by negative 3, 3 by negative 3, 3. So that sits in the y, z plane. Right? So, picture, something like this. And I'm supposed to calculate this circulation around this thing, right? When viewed, let's see, counterclockwise orientation from the positive x-axis. So that's, if I stand out here, right, and look that way, it should be counterclockwise, which would be like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. How can I do this? Yeah, you could do four line integrals, right? You guys see that's really what I'm being asked? The circulation is just the closed integral around the curve of your vector field. So x, oops, x, y, comma, z, comma, 3y, dr, right? So you could parametrize each of the four line segments here, right? And calculate that way. Or you could check the assumptions of Stokes and try that. Either way. I'm going to try Stokes just because it's in the Stokes section. Okay, so first things first. To apply Stokes, what do I need? Counterclockwise, piecewise smooth everything, basically. Okay, so I should check piecewise smooth everything. Uh, the curve is pretty clearly piecewise smooth. Yeah. Where the heck is the surface for which that's the boundary? So there's lots of surfaces that you can pick. The easy one is the square itself. You guys see that? Okay, so I'm pretty sure that squares being flat chunks of planes are piecewise smooth, right? Being one piece and being smooth probably makes them piecewise smooth. Cool? Okay, so I check kind of piecewise smooth. Check. That's the surface and the curve. What else do I need? Counterclockwise oriented. I need counterclockwise oriented matches the normal vector on the surface, right? Mm -hmm. So I better make sure that my normal vector on the surface points along a positive x-axis. Yes. Okay. I need my curve to be closed and otherwise nice, right? Is your curve closed close and otherwise simple. nice? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I check closed nice curve. I check orientations match. What else do I need? Good. You need bounded stuff? Everything has to be bounded. Check, bounded. What else? You need one more thing. Yeah, you need orientable, which I kind of checked when I checked oriented. Right? What else did I have? There's one more thing that you have to check. What's continuous? Uh, the function is continuous all points. What function? Yeah, you need to check the partial derivatives of the vector field are continuous on a slightly fatter set. Right? So where are the partial derivatives of my vector field G discontinuous? No, they're continuous. That's a polynomial vector field, right? Everything's chill. So check for continuous partials. Okay, so now I think I can apply Stokes. Right, and Stokes says that I can make this integral 
over the curve equal to the integral over the surface of, of the curl of that thing. You guys cool with us? Yes? Yes. Yes? Cool. All right. Now, let's do the curl. Take the curl. So, when we take the curl, So you calculate this, you get 201, and then we need to talk with d area, right? Okay, what's your unit normal off that square, though? So you need a vector, right, that's unit long and points out parallel to the positive x-axis, right? So one, zero, zero. It's just i. So one, zero, zero, right? That's just the i vector? It doesn't matter, but I think it's two, zero, x. Two, zero, x. Yeah. Did you guys get the curl wrong? I think it's two, zero, x. I got negative x. People got negative x. And it really doesn't matter in the end, but. Yeah, it doesn't matter in the end because it's dotted. So careful with your curl calculations. and. Clearly, I shouldn't be trusting Claude. Uh, yes, two zero Damn it, Brian. I trusted you with one thing. <laughs> Actually, I trusted you with three components of curl. You got two of them right, so whatever. <laughs> and you got the only one right that matters. Why? Because yeah, when you dot product, you're going to get zero anyway, right? So and now, here I should be integrating d what? dy dz. Mm -hmm. well, dy dz, yes. Yeah. So I need some parameterization, right? So that's going to be in y's and z's, right, for a square, in the yz plane. And it's going to go in the y's, where's your square left? Negative 3 to 3. Negative 3 to 3. And your z? Negative 3 to 3. Negative 3 to 3. And really, you should check, right? that this is the right normal to go with that parameterization, and it is. Cool? Really, you should just think about it for a second, that your unit normal that you've created actually goes with the parameterization. Right, because a different parameterization of that square might have different bounds, and the normal you would half could be scaled a little bit differently. In, in, in a more complicated case, that power you up. I would instead be the cross product of the two. Yeah, you would ideally take the cross product of the two partials, right? You guys see that? Because what I'm doing there is I'm kind of distorting the area. So you just have to make sure that this thing here is actually the DA. Right? The unit normal to this thing is always going to be that i vector, but it might have an extra scaling factor because of the way you change the parameterization. You guys cool with this? Okay. Out of that, what do I get? I get 2 integrated over a square that's how big? 36. 36. So you get all told out of this? 72. 72. <coughs> What does 72 mean? It's the flux. That is the circulation, which is wandering way back here to the beginning. A line integral, right? So that's the amount of work that's done by the vector field G going around this square. In other words, this thing helps you to go counterclockwise around that square. A lot. Sure. 72 microjoules might be a lot. Like, it depends on what the units are. You guys see that? But yeah, 72 is a bigger number than 1, for sure. Cool?